kind of looked at this as a, a Jane Gunn's best practices. These are my rules that work for me. And I only have one, and the reason I did that is so I remember it and I stick to it. I figured if I gave myself a whole bunch of rules, it'd be difficult to follow. So there's one in my mind, and it kind of summarizes the whole recruiting process for me. So if it works for me, it doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you, but I'm sure you will take back some of, some of my rule number one to your company. So here's my rule. <coughs> Meet mutual expectations. Make sure that what you're doing, you're both mutually in agreement upon, okay? What are mutual ex expectations and what is it we need to agree upon? Everything. Everything within your organization, what you do, you need to mutually explain it to your prospective candidates and agree that that's the right fit for them. So here's my top ten list. See, I'm not very good at it. Ensure the applicant meets the company's hiring criteria. Standards need to be developed and adhered to. We are in, coming up, or we are in, and it's going to get worse, a horrific driver shortage. But don't compromise your company's core values just to fill a seat. Because then you're hiring for the wrong reasons. So a couple of things that may be on your company's criteria. Number of years experience. Maybe you need that two-year mark type of driving experience, make sure it matches that the experience that you're looking for, the candidate has. Whether it's driving a tractor trailer or a straight truck, a flatbed, what does that candidate possess that you will need him to do? Okay. Ability and willingness to cross the border. Do you need him to be fast approved? Is that where you go? Make sure that's mutually agreed upon at the front door. What's acceptable for your accidents and incidents? Again, don't compromise your values just to fill a seat. You've got the CVOR, the abstract, and, and most recently the PSP as your qualifiers. You can take a look at what they've done, where they've been, and get a feel. Is that the right fit for you? Is that who you want representing your company and driving your equipment? Because what he's done in the past, history will repeat itself. Okay? So all cannot be forgiven. If they do not meet the company's hiring criteria, this one's easy, be brutally honest and don't proceed. Thank him for coming out, him or her for coming out and, and learning more about your organization, but I'm sorry, we can't meet your hiring, you don't meet our hiring criteria. There's nothing wrong with that. You should have standards and stick to it. Number two, and probably should be number one, as far as what the driver and the expectations are. Home and family time required. What expectations do they have for time on the road and time being home for their reset or their time off? If the guy says to you, listen, I want to be home every other day, and you're a long haul carrier, and you're only going to get him home every six or seven days or every 70 hours, he's not the right fit. He's told you what he wants. Don't bring him onto your fleet and be all surprised when he says, I need to be home by Wednesday. This is Johnny's hockey night, and, and I've made that commitment. You, gave, you, you took the information, and you didn't listen to your own rules. He's told you what he needs, and it doesn't meet those mutual expectations. Pay packages need to be clearly defined so there's no guessing on how much or who pays for what. Now, there's two different beasts here. Owner-operators, you've got your tolls, your bridges, your transponders, permits, plates, insurance, fuel tax, Road tax, satellite stripping, are, is the company paying for that or is this something that the broker is going to pay for? Make sure it's mutually agreed upon up front so that they know what's required of them and you know what they're willing to do. Company driver, mileage rate, your benefits, your equipment, do you slip seat, where are they going to park? If they're living in a small town, they don't have the driveway to park, where does he park that equipment? How close is it to home? Is that going to infringe on his hours of service to get there to pick up his truck? Is he four hours away? These are all things that need to be mutually agreed upon and identified. Expectations of miles to meet financial obligations. Let's do the math. If his truck payment is $2,500 a month, and you as a carrier can only provide him 2,000 miles a week, let's face it, you're going to bankrupt him. Do you want to bring him on? Do the math. I think it's important with the brokers that you sit down and you be realistic. Here's what you're going to make. 
here's the miles that we can provide you. Does your math add up? Can you afford to work here and can we afford to keep you? Lanes being traveled in areas they won't go. New York City, anyone? Are you looking to go to Texas? Because I can't provide that. You got to have realistic expectations and make sure they understand your lanes. If they are looking to go to Texas and California and you run the Eastern Seaboard, they're not the right fit. Let it go. You can't make them fit your company. It has to be mutually agreed upon. Expectations need to be clearly defined from safety. Meetings, training, hours of service, satellite, um, sensor track reports, disciplinary actions, make sure the driver knows up ahead of time what he's in for. Do you have a safety meeting once a week, once a month? Is that something he needs to commit to? Make sure it's lined up out front. General working conditions that the, he or she is going to work under. What regulations do they need to adhere to? Is there random drug testing they're going to be involved in? These are all things that they need to know at the front door to make that educated decision. Safety. Safety going to meet them at the truck stop. What's going to happen if they do? Ticket procedures. We've had, uh, I've experienced in the past, a driver gets a ticket over in New York. Nobody ever told him what he was supposed to do with it, so he didn't do anything. It's, it's true. It's reality. Make sure they understand, and it's clearly defined right from the giddy-go. Expectations of conduct with office personnel, customers, and operations. You don't want to have a screaming match between your drivers and your dispatchers. That's the last thing you ever want. You need a conflict resolution process that they know where to go if they encounter a problem. They know who to talk to and how it's going to get worked out. Frustrations build and tension mounts and they leave you. People don't quit companies, people quit people. And it's the same at the front door. People hire people. So let's treat them like that way. If you give them these tools, they're going to be successful. So set them up to, to, to achieve. Expectations for pickup and delivery of freight and the process to follow if not able to make it as scheduled. They're going to be late. They're stuck at the border. What do they do? They, you need to tell them. Do they call customer service? Do, are they supposed to call the customer themselves? Do they notify dispatch? Let them know what they need to do. And then there's no gray area. It's all black and white. And this is very important. Ensure that you both share the same moral values, core values, ethics, morals, that they understand yours and that they agree with it. Be brutally honest. I always say that the greatest tool a recruiter has is admitting when it's not the right fit and not hiring them. Be brutally honest and tell them. Tell them what they're lacking. Tell them maybe why you couldn't. I mean, if it comes down to a CBOR, an abstract, and certain personal information, you obviously don't want to make that call or, or inform them. But let them know where they've gone wrong so maybe the next time they can go right. And if you can't agree, if they, you can't meet each other's mutual expectations, guess what? They are not the right fit. And don't hire them. It's as easy as that. I always say that retention takes care of itself if you recruit them right the first at the front door. Retention will always come back and help you. And it's if you stick to my one rule, hire the right fit. Don't be scared to say, I'm sorry, I don't think that we're the right fit and we should go on. There's nothing wrong with that. You're hurting your companies when you don't. And that's where you see the 80% turnover rate. Because somebody's told them something at the front door that isn't a reality. Like, I'm going to promise you I'm, you can go to Texas because that's what you really want. But you know what? Like Kim said earlier, that's not where we go. So the mutual expectations aren't there. Tell them that. And it's going to be, benefit you. And in the long run, that person is going to remember you as a recruiter. And maybe a couple years from now, they will be the right fit. So they'll think about you. And they'll come back. And that's really all that I've got.